college sports, we come to win. With Brandon, Mark, and Matt, no one go hard as that. Share with your folks and they'll learn where it all be at. It's just three of the guys, childhood friends that be setting the vibe with a few hot takes, jokes, and predictions. Love the Boise State, we now welcome you to listen. Shirts and skins, let's go. Bronco Nation, what is up? Welcome to the Shirts and Skins podcast. I'm Matt Lamb, joined by Brandon Minert and Mark Moss. We are coming to you on a Wednesday morning. Thursday Maybe morning. Thursday. Yeah, yeah, yesterday was Wednesday. Thursday morning. Um, <laughs> live. This will, be, this will be, yeah, we're live, but it'll come out later. <laughs> How are we doing, gentlemen? Doing all right. This is the second time we recorded this week. Dang. Yeah, we had some we had some tech, technical difficulties on the last episode we published that we posted on YouTube. Recorded the last one. A good hour. Without testing. Good the hour. best <laughs> hour we've ever done. <laughs> Guaranteed. <laughs> Dang it. Oh, uh, that one yeah. was painful. Uh, but we're back. And uh, coming off a big, big game. Big yesterday. game. Man. Huge game. Oh, wow. We're going to talk basketball. We're going to talk a little bit of football later. So if you want football content, stick around. But we are going to talk huge game, huge win against New Mexico at the pit, in the pit. Why don't why don't we just re redo what we did a few days ago? And Brandon kept bringing in his charts about Max Rice and shooting oh, percentages and stuff, dude. Yeah, if any of you doubted Max Rice out there, shame on you. Shame I on everyone. I did. I did. I was in that crowd. Yeah. What a game. Yeah. Last the episode we didn't release. <laughs> uh, I I was on the side of voting for Max Rice to shoot less. I every I, let, let's we'll talk about the game, but I I would like to say. I think the local media and everyone, they hesitated. Like a lot of fans on Twitter for the last few weeks, Max is not, Max shouldn't be playing as much. Max shouldn't be shooting. And finally, like J Tuss and BJ Reigns, like started publishing like literal stats about the shooting percentages of the team. We were dead last in the whole conference. And oh, he our was. two, well, and then our yeah. two starting guards, like last and second to last in shooting yeah. percentage. So it's not like anyone made that up. It's not like anyone was trying to bash. I mean, a couple crazies, but but the reality was they were not, and he was not shooting well this year. Period. End of story. Against other than like the NAIA and the D two schools that they played, he really wasn't playing well. That said, we've seen this type of game before, and that was an all timer last night. Awesome for him. Insane game. All timer. Yeah. Really all timer. And my thing was the points that I had made that sounded like a robot when we started. L- we listen to it were were two things so he had made it was something like four like two point field goals max rice uh-huh. in a series of games like three games and and max takes threes and close up twos yeah he doesn't take like mid range jumpers he's not coach's that type kid of man like seriously, you the worst shot in basketball is within four feet of the three point line. It's not a three pointer. You know what I yeah. mean? He doesn't take any of those. He doesn't take, take any of those. Deep three or he's taking layups yeah. or yeah. And so and he was missing and this whole year he's missed that floater that he made last year. Mm-hmm. He's missing close layups. And in Utah State, he missed six field goal like two point shots. And you know, we we lose overtime. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we tied yeah. in regulation. And so and the second thing I brought up was Chibuzo Agbo. Or Abo is, I guess, how they pronounce Abo. it now. Like, I don't understand where the G went. It's last silent. year it was it's there. <laughs> it was some, there last some year. Some people say it's <laughs> there last year. Wasn't it, was, it? it was. It, it reminds me of uh, oh, what was our running back that uh, the last Fiesta Bowl running back. Um, Ajayi, Ajayi. Ajayi, and all of a sudden he got a publicist and uh, and an agent, and his and his UK accent came back. Oh, <laughs> he never had it ever, <laughs> and all of a sudden he's going to the NFL, and he's got this like crazy strong accent. It's like, where did this okay. come from? Well, anyway, so he in in this season he basically or, or many games would disappear in the second half, like yeah, oh for however many shots just disappear, yeah. and so that was a huge problem to me in these games that were getting close. UNLV that we lost, San Diego State that we almost gave away, Fresno that was a tough game down the stretch, and then Utah State. I mean, he was he and and he's a big part of our our team. Um, I think. Anyway, so you go to last night against New Mexico, 
And all of that reversed. I mean, Agbo, I think he had six points in the second half, which are which are important points. Obviously, Max Rice went off. That's not going to happen, like, many times. <laughs> no. I mean, you can't just have that type of game. And so all the, th- all the pieces fit together last night. But I thought New Mexico is the best team. I mean, I thought they were really a top 15 team, personal opinion on that. None of us thought we were going to win. No. Right? No, 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 no. And, in fact, I, to be quite honest, I didn't want to watch the end. I mean, they were running guys out of the gym. I yep. mean, really good teams running them out of the gym and then coming off a tough loss. I was like, this could be <laughs> a 25. Yep. And we are 10 and a half point underdogs yep. going in. But yeah, huge credit to Max Rice, man. Ugh. I mean, you that guy, you set a stage for that guy, and he's going to perform, right? I mean, a couple he times has. at least. Yeah, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. He's this had one. some big, yeah, yeah. big, big games. And, and, and I'm, you know, I, I didn't see the full game from <clears> beginning <throat> to end. Um, but what I did see, I mean, Max is hitting shots. A lot of those shots, you're wondering – how does this go in? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that three where he sidesteps and kind of just chucks it. <laughs> yeah. Dude, that was a big three. It, that was a huge and, three. And Buzo hit one just a few minutes before that. And was there awesome. was one in the paint that he just kind of threw up. Goes yeah. in. You know, he'll, he, was he got some e- Yeah. He'll make a few of those. But yeah. the difference is there's four or five easy ones that he would miss. Like close floaters or layups that he's been missing. And that he, he made, made all, all of, of them. Yeah. Seven for 14 from three point line. And that last three pointer he, he threw up at the last, you know, yeah. remember that house? Yeah. Did that house guy, can I say, he's one of the more aggravating players oh. that I, I struggle watching Super him because annoying. he's so animated and aggressive. And what I think is funny is, is when you're watching him play, because I've seen a couple of their games against San Diego State, I've seen a couple of their games against, what did, what did, who did they play? Nevada. Anyway, and, and all the commentators are always like, oh, he plays with so much passion. Just because he's animated. And you're like, wait, nobody else plays with passion. That's not like flipping off the crowd or doing all this stuff. But last night, he was the opposite. He had like almost no emotion. And so you don't really want that. But anyway, he there was there was 28 seconds left. They were down by nine. And Max Rice was just trying to dribble out the ball. And then House just starts guarding him hard, like really pressing him hard. So Max throws it up. And that kind of counts as a, yeah, an attempt. But... I mean, he, he was over fifty percent. House is awesome as a player, but yeah, he's super aggravating to watch. But he does some dumb stuff. He had a he was kind of in foul trouble almost, right? And he he, he does things that you see like in middle school ball where someone's frustrated and he fouls because you're frustrated, yeah. like that a high division one player shouldn't do. He did that last night. He like went for a crazy steal around half court that he got a foul call yeah. and had to go sit down. It's like, dude, that's such a boneheaded play. Those three guards, though, I mean, Dent. Can sc- those Dent three guards, awesome. if they're playing well, yeah. like House wasn't yeah. playing well, no. they can't be beaten. And I want, I want Mark, Mark Moss. I want Mark Moss to officially apologize to the Boise State basketball team. Why? Be- oh, let me tell you why. This was a turning point in my relationship with Mark. We last, going back year, there, last year, last year, last year, January two thousand twenty-three. I love we're, how you keep these receipts. I, I have do. No idea where you're going. <laughs> I do. I do. <laughs> we're uh, we're playing, and and this marked a, a somewhat of a change to Mark's basketball commentating on our text group, because we're playing New Mexico at the pit, and every time one of their guards would drive in <laughs> and get an easy layup, which they do quite often, and they did last night, and Dan they did, did last night. Dan we did. couldn't stop Dan him. Dan was so good last night. He, he's he's really good. Yeah. I mean, he he's fun to watch. Points. And yeah. it's like, and it's not just us. It's San no, Diego no. State, and it's sure. a lot of other teams. Every time Mark would text, that guy's an athlete. We're not athletic. <laughs> we can't do it. And I'm just like, we beat them at home, and we're playing them really well. Yeah. And then we took them to overtime. And I'm, and at one point, I was like, Mark, you need to shut up. This is last year. This right? is yes, last I do year. That. I was like, <laughs> you, you need that. to shut up. Yeah, you got, I you can't. Got fired t- up. I can't yeah. handle it. But yeah. I've heard yeah. some of the athletic guard comments this year. Yeah, and it, it's true. It didn't just stop last year. And so I want you to formally apologize. Okay, I'll say to this. To the team. I will say this. that There's way more than one way to win a basketball game, and you don't have to be the most athletic team on the court to win. <laughs> I'm not going to sit I here mean, and say that Max Rice is all of a sudden last night. more athletic, as demonstrated from last night. Uh, I mean, Tyson Degenhardt wait, but can't the jump up two steps. <laughs> but here's he the reality, though. And and we awesome game last night. And I was listening to something that's like the second – Best road win ever as far as against a ranked team. We played great. I'm not going to 
Last was time awesome. was I'm 2015 not, against San Diego State. Was it? Yeah, yeah I don't well, know. I think, I so, think uh, Creighton was eight when we beat him yeah, yeah. on the road. But the reality, the reality is we played our best game of the year probably. They probably didn't play their best. We shot. The reality is we shot 48% or 47, 48. They shot 40. If House, to your point, if he makes a couple of those threes, like the place was ready to just come down, right? Like multiple times he had open threes and he missed them. A lot of the games previous, he's making those. They're going on crazy runs. He missed them. They didn't go on the crazy runs. Max has an out-of-world experience. And that was the game. Yeah. So it doesn't change the fact that their three guards are significantly more athletic than our guards. But that doesn't matter. We won the game because not all about athleticism. If it was, then we would win a lot of games. Yeah. So uh, to your point, yeah, I did. I remember that from last year, and, and that was annoying. I, and I've, and I've, I kept waiting you know, yesterday. I was like, especially when it was tied 67 67, I'm like, this, I mean, that team can go on a run and rattle yeah. off 12 points faster than like in less than a minute yeah and i just kept thinking i'm just waiting for them to go on a run because what happens is they'll they'll hit a shot get, get a steal, steal yep. hit a quick break a fast break and then we'll miss a shot and then it's like six or eight points yep. in four in a matter of 40 seconds but you know we took br- care of the ball that was i think we had 11 turnovers which is well, low Dagenhart brought the ball down yeah which is, that was smart that's a coaching thing man. because impressive. whoever's guarding Dagenhart is not house mashburn or dent and I think that they just felt like we don't need to run Jace or Roddy yeah. against their really, really good on-ball defenders all game long. Super great coaching. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it worked. We yeah. didn't turn it over. We didn't give them easy buckets. They missed some shots, but it was a great, it was a great game. I, I thought it was game. interesting how the commentators at the end of the game said, of any of the teams in the Mountain West, this is the team. Boise State's the team that could have knocked them off. And, and it's interesting that, you know, they said that because we just beat them. Yeah. But at the same time, like, Burns has done an incredible job on defense. I mean, because it travels well. Mm-hmm. If an offense mm-hmm. doesn't travel well. And I think this is Leon Rice's best year coaching. I honestly why, think why, that. Why do you think that? Let me say this. Super team, Mark? I'm not, yeah, I'm not ready to say no or yes to that. I think it's his best year coaching. And, why? and the reason I say that is because... The quality of opponents of the Mountain West is so high. Yeah, we're second. We had a chance if a few if a if a free yeah. throw was made to be number one in the Mountain West, and I think that UNLV game really kicked him into hey I need to get more guys off the bench. Mm-hmm. So we have he's putting the players in the right place to win, and when they execute, they're winning against high competition in the Mountain West. Now I get that that. Non conference, we didn't have our rotation down. We didn't really know what we were doing. And it scares me that when we play P5 teams or P4 teams, that we seem to struggle. But I just think this year, I mean, I, the, the loss at Utah State wasn't coaching. I think the loss at UNLV was. Um, what other losses have we had that are? Have That's been the only two in league. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, it, I think the co- the coaching was with UNLV, and then the I don't th- I think it was a player thing at the Utah State game, but the fact that we're competing at a high level in one of the best conferences in the country, as Boise State, I think is fantastic. It's yeah. amazing. Like I'm I'm super happy with super it. Super pumped. Yeah. Jace Whiting played 19 minutes last night. Uh, Cam Martin 14. Andrew Meadow seven. So, I mean, yeah. you see Whiting's role kind of increase. He had seven points. Um, he, two, he played good, didn't turn it over, I yeah. don't think, or not much. So he wasn't a liability. <laughs> and yeah. sometimes, you know, that's that's good. Yeah, it's it's yeah. not about playing the best players, but it's about yeah. limiting your liabilities. Yeah, and, sometimes, yeah. yeah. I think what Rice is finding out is that he can put in two more guys off the bench and not lose the game. Yeah. Like, before he was just so afraid of losing the game by putting other guys in. And I think – and Cam, he, he adds a – an aspect to our offense on the offensive side that's really important because he can pass. He could extend the floor in the past. I don't think he's been shooting that well right now. But, I mean, if you have – I think it's tough if you're going to double Omar, who's, I think, our best offensive player. Omar and Dude, and, and he, had four, he had 14 rebounds. Second yeah. highest of the game. And Toppin so I, had 15. I think if you're, if you're focusing on Omar and, and Abo – or no, if you're focusing on Omar and, and Deggy – then Chibuzo and Cam can really do some work down there, man. So I think it's a really, I think it's a, a dangerous team, especially if they're playing well on defense. 
Yeah, no, it's a dangerous team, and and that was the missing piece. And like, you don't expect, nor do you need Max to do thirty five every night. Because I mean, Degenhardt was like what one of eight. Yeah, he had, like he, six had, he had four points. So yeah. yeah, so I mean, he and he, you know, two games ago, Degenhardt's in a little bit. The I Fresno mean, he had twenty something, but yeah, he's. He's had a couple games that he struggled, so they needed that from Max Rice last night. You don't need that from him every night. Um, but we, if if Max is hitting the three ball like he was, that takes this team to another level, right? And I don't doubt that Degenhart's going to get back to playing really good. And uh, that was the missing piece. I mean, all the shooting stuff, that was the missing piece. So if we can get Max... To that, to the level of that he was last year, forty percent three points. Uh, then we're gonna be tough to beat for sure. Yeah. Somebody asked me last night what I thought would be the outcome of the game. I said we were gonna lose by eight, mm-hmm. and I was like, "Yeah." And Max Rice will probably play thirty-eight minutes. <laughs> How well, many minutes did he play? Thirty-eight minutes. Yeah. <laughs> and we won by eight. Yeah. So good. Worked out. I, you know, I was listening. I, I haven't heard the whole thing, but I listened to a little bit of. Leon had an interview after the game with BJ and it was interesting uh, BJ kind of sets him up the first question and I thought it was it was cool that his very first thing that he said was he complimented his scout team yeah, he's done that thing. a couple times after and games. I, you know I just I got me thinking about like it is a big it's a he, I think the travel party if you will is like 30 people so all the coaches the staff the players and we see eight of the guys that play and you don't necessarily think you know about the scout team guys, you know, the walk-ons and the other guys that just aren't getting minutes. And he was talking about how that they, they had their best two. And that, I don't know, just like, I think that would be super tough to be. I mean, if you're on scholarship, you're on scholarship and you're part of the team and maybe not as tough, but you're on the team. You're working really hard. You're not even preparing for the game. You're preparing to be the opponent in practice, to give them a look and to do that all year, um, to get zero, like, a claim like yeah. <laughs> no one even knows half their guys' names. Uh, I never got to that point in you know what I mean. Like I didn't play long enough to get to a point where I was a scout team guy, you know. And I just I respect those guys because like to practice that many hours and put that much time in, yeah, and I love uh, it. they're obviously an extremely important part of the team. I just thought that was well, cool. Who's Leon the guy, mentioned that. There's a guy that just got eligibility, but he's on. He's not eligible to play. But he's on the team, was that and the, I guess he's really good. Is that the What's guy from, name? like, the Netherlands or something? Is that uh, who we're talking about? I, I've, yeah. I've heard of what you're talking about. I don't know. Anyway, but um, a bunch of the coaches are like, he's really good, and he's on the scout team. Well, that was like, remember whack, back when they used to have to sit out, and, like, Shaver and Kijab yeah. were, yeah. like, on the scout team, and they were, like, better than half <laughs> the, the starters, starters, but they couldn't play. <laughs> yeah. So, but anyways, I thought that was cool, and obviously big-time win. It, it puts us back. You know, you dropped a couple at home, right? I think everyone like ah, was saying, "Okay, you got to go thirteen and five in league, right?" And it was beat all the crappy te- or all the lower level teams, win all your home games, and then and then just if you lose to the top five on the road, then you're thirteen and five, right? Well, we lost to UNLV at home, we lost to Utah State at home, so you got to pick off. So now we've picked off at Nevada, at New Mexico. So really, we're basically at even, right? So the San Diego State reporter put it an interesting way. He's like, there's the bottom tier, the bottom four teams who are kind of surging. Wyoming. And, Wyoming is not. Yeah, yeah, they're kind of mid. They're tough. Yeah. And he's like, then you have the top tier. And so basically he had a point system. He's like, it's negative one if you lose to the bottom tier. Okay. It's zero if you win at home. Okay. And it's a plus one if you still won from the top tier away. And he's okay. like, you got to finish positive. Yeah. I think we're in that, was. we're about at even. And he, he had us at even yeah. before the Utah State loss. And then right? we lost that one, and then we so, just picked yeah, one off. Yeah, right. And so we lost to UNLV, yeah. so we were negative one, but we won Nevada, yeah. so we had plus. So it's like we're kind of even, maybe even a point five plus with, with the win at New Mexico. That was a big win because we don't play them at home. Yeah, we do. We do. New Mexico? Yes, yeah. we do. Oh, we do? Yeah. Which is going to oh, be tough. Oh, okay. I, I guess they tough. only showed the next five games for them. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's going to be tough. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, we I mean, just gonna be bunched. we got to keep winning games. I mean, and I I still contend. Like I don't think I know the Mountain West is going to get multiple teams in. Um, How you many know, teams do you think will get in? Because we're we're starting to beat up on each other. Three, f- three guaranteed, maybe four. They, they, at po- some point they're saying six. You know, we're not getting six. We're not I getting think seven. Four is a. I I would bet be, on four. Be, I, I yeah, if I had to bet on a number, I'd say four. We got to be one of those four, but the reality is, it doesn't mean. Let's say we finish third or fourth, okay, in our league. In the, that in they the don't, tournament the, or in the no in, the in 
regular, regular season. season. Okay. Yeah. The, the, the selection committee doesn't say, oh, the Mountain West is pretty good this year. We're going to do four. Oh, there's a the top four. They don't do that. They look at the whole resume of the whole year. And the, the issue, I mean, good and bad, right? We schedule differently than Nevada and New Mexico and Utah State, right? We schedule tougher. We have a few more losses than them. Right now on our schedule, we have more losses. Ultimately, at the end of the year, if we beat, let's say, New Mexico, let's say we split with them. They don't necessarily look head. What I'm saying is they don't look at head to head between your conference. They just look at, you know, there's 30 auto bids or whatever it is. And then there's 30 at large or 35 at large and they rank. And so what, what I'm getting at is we need to keep winning games. So what, just because we finished top four, let's say, doesn't mean we're in for sure. Right. Because yeah. the fifth team might be New Mexico who had three less losses than us. So Rice was saying yesterday, he's like, it's not about the net. He's like, to him, he's like, it's not about the net because he said we beat, what, what team was it? Um, oh, I forget. Anyway, so he was talking about, he's like, it's really not about the net because your net could go up or down and, you know, you can beat a really bad team and your net could go way up just depending on where people are at. He's like, it's all about the quad ones. I think that is a bigger deal. I and agree like, with that. This year, they have more quad one wins yes, they do. to this point than mm-hmm. they did all last mm-hmm. all of last year. Yeah, I agree. And, and, and they look could. at these. I, I don't know. I'm not going to pretend like I know exactly. But the selection committee has all these metrics. And I think they weigh quad one bigger. But the net and the Ken Palm are things they, they do yeah. look at. And so it's just important we keep winning, right? Because yeah. we're 20-something points behind New Mexico. We just beat them. We're like 30 points behind them in the net and, and the Ken Palm. That you know, it, so it's all really easy, actually. Just win. J- right? You gotta win. I mean, well, yeah. you can't drop the easy ones. You cannot drop any more of those. And uh, so, I don't. Thir- yeah. So okay, let Matt. Did you have anything to add to that, or? Um, you know, I. You know, get you can get wrapped up in net Ken Palm whatever. Do I? I think we're gonna make the tournament, and. This has to be the year we win one. <laughs> it has to be. That's what that that's the point I was making. Is I mean, Mark's saying just win. I'm like, yeah, just win. And how about we just win? Win in March? one. Just just win one in March. You know the thing. The the reason is is if we all if we're all beating up on each other, now we're starting to low our seed starts to get higher and higher. Mm-hmm. You know, so do we come that, together like, as a conference six, and be like, hey, bottom you guys. guys you guys Stop. all lose. <laughs> Stop. Stop. <laughs> and then you're done. We need San Diego State to get a high a, a low seed. And then we need the the other three of us to get under a twelve seed. <laughs> That's what we we need. won't get above a twelve. The, at large teams rarely get above well, twelve. Well, where were we last year? We were, well, we like were an eight, at eight, eight nine. nine, yeah. And so and so we've had some good seeds. In fact, the year we won the Mountain West, totally different. We were a lot of people were like they're going to be a six seed, and we ended up in we ended eight. up at an eight and against we played Memphis, Memphis at nine. Dude, don't give Not me that true. stuff. Yeah, we won't get a twelve because the because. The at-large teams generally are viewed as better than most of the small conference winners. Like, I don't think you're going to get an at-large above an 11. Okay, so so potentially 11, 11 10, to, yeah. 11 to 7. But, yeah, you want it. Potentially. But, uh, yeah, we're but talking. You don't we're, want it's way eight, too nine. early to be talking about seeding, man. It's uh, way too early. Like, we lose. What are we? How many losses we have? Six? Yeah, six. six. I don't know if, if as a mount, I know that we're getting a lot of respect this year. If you have 11 losses, I don't think you're getting in. From the Mount West. 10 is on the bubble. I really... All right, let's go I, over that. You ready? Can I... Can sure. I, the mm-hmm. remaining... So tell me okay. what you think our schedule or our win-loss will be over the next... These games. The rest of the over. season? Yeah. Okay. Air Force at home. Should be a win. Colorado State at Colorado State. Iffy. On... Uh, probably a loss. I'll just say that. Utah State at Utah State. Loss. Fresno at home. Win. San Diego State... Or San Jose State at home. Win. At Wyoming. That's that might be a tough one. I'm gonna go win, but but you know. At Air Force. Win. Versus New Mexico at, at home. home. I'd like to say win. In March. But we're gonna lose to beat one them of those twice. Games. It's tough to yeah. beat them twice. So it's six and two <laughs> well, so here far. You go. Okay, here we go. At home. Tough to beat them twice. Okay. All we're right. gonna lose one of those two, I feel like, but okay. Okay. Seven and two. San Diego State. Uh, San, San Diego State. State. So that loss. How many? So that's seven that? and three. So that's nine losses. That would that would be thirteen and five. That would be fine. Then we're then we we have nine losses at that point. 
So the, who did you count as a loss? Colorado State, Utah State. Yeah, I'm. I'm basically saying on the road. Those those three and tough then, games on the road. And then and San Diego State. I think on the road. Yeah. So but that's a, so those. We three. could we could win any of those. The thing about this year's teams, we could we just beat New Mexico at New Mexico. We could win any of those games. Yeah. But those ones I just said were wins. Nevada at home, New Mexico at home, at Wyoming. I think we probably lose one of those games. You know, so we're four zero on the road. I, yeah, it's great. It's awesome. <laughs> it's but we really got, it, what I'm saying is, okay, so if we go 12 and six in conference, now we have 10 losses. We go to Vegas and we lose semifinal or quarterfinal. Now we have 11 losses. I don't think we're guaranteed in. <sighs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I, and I'm not saying we have to go undefeated the rest of the way, but you just, you know, it's you keep cr- winning quite a one. You keep winning games. Don't lose any of the easy, the gimmies, you know? Uh, I just think, I don't know. I just, I know the Mountain West gets a lot of is getting a lot of uh, publicity and and rightfully so, but I would feel very uncomfortable going into Selection Sunday with eleven losses as a mid major, expecting an at large. It's just in, it's interesting to me that if you look from if you if you look back on Saturday, March 9th, which is a day after the last game we play. Okay. And from Wait, from right oh, now, okay. well, like we play San Diego State March eighth. Okay. I think from right now to then, it could go three ways. It could Dude, go, we could yeah. lose a bunch. Yep. We could kind of win the ones we're going to win and yeah. lose ones. And then, or we could win a bunch. Yeah. Like we could just go on a tear and win a bunch. It's like, I have no idea which way it's going to go. Yeah. I mean, it could, any of those situations could easily it, happen. It makes it super fun. And I'm, I find myself watching Mountain West basketball. Even when Boise State's not yeah, playing. Yeah. I don't really watch. First time I've done that. This yeah, year. really. And it's a great league. It's fun to watch. And, and uh, you know, I don't know. It, it kind of brings, are we still talking about this game? Or can I, mean, I, can if I you have transition any good a little points. bit? I yeah. just, it kind of, it kind of, you know, with what's going on in college sports right now, it's almost this like, is this the future of, of like really paying attention to our conference? And I'm talking about football, and I'm talking about the potential big split that's coming. I think if you – I don't know if, how much you guys are paying attention to that stuff, but it's pretty clear that that big split we're talking about in 10 years is coming way sooner. There's a ton of lawsuits. Like, I, like the the separation yeah, there, between yeah, the there, I mean, the bottom. Power 5 commissioners were meeting in secret last week together. You know, just – there's all these, like – Well, not in secret because I knew about it, right? <laughs> oh, an open secret. But I don't know. It's just – like, at some point, is that what we're going to look at in football and just say this is enough, like winning the Mount West because we're no longer part of the big – Could be. I don't know. Yeah. I have a feeling that's coming, um, which is a bummer. It's something I, to talk I, I about I think later. in basketball, we've that's just what we've come to expect because – Basketball is a different animal. It than is football. a different animal. And football, where we had a chance, like in the BCS, to get mm-hmm. in and be, you know get some recognition, and there was always hopes of of getting higher or to that mm-hmm. being a national presence. And basketball, it's always just been, yeah, maybe we'll get to the get to the big dance. But I've always considered us smaller in basketball. Yeah, right. Than football. Well, we have been. So, but look how I mean. But I guess we could still be happy. Yeah, for sure. At, it's all relative, right? That, that's know? that's what I'm getting at. Is like at what? Yeah. Like, what do you have to change to say we're still happy? This is still relevant. It's I, still yeah. exciting. If if you if if you pose that question to me and you <clears throat> and you say there's a split, the bottom and the top. If you give me rele- uh, relegation, I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, it's just because not, I just don't give think me it's a glimmer happen. of hope. Because I know. Look at San Diego State. They almost won it all last year. I know. A game away. From winning. They were they a game maybe away. A half, maybe a half away. Yeah. And they really were. And yes. it's like, wow. You know, so you could, and, and the odds are incredibly stacked against you, but you could go on like a three-year run and then really make a run in the and like get hot at the end. We're talking about football. We're talking about basketball. Oh, basketball. In okay. basketball, uh-huh. you could do it. And so there's a little glimmer of oh, hope. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so yeah. that's what always keeps us like going. But yeah. in football... I mean, it, it's it's so much more difficult to yeah. have any chance of being relevant. And that's what bugs me about the bowl games. It's so irrelevant. <laughs> it's so irrelevant. It means nothing. It's meaningless. And so, you know, I get the entertainment value of bowl games. I get all that stuff. But for me, it's... But do, like, do you feel there's been a little bit of a shift as far as, like, hopes and expectations? with like On maybe football or more, basketball? Yeah, like you're more invested or you're more hopeful with basketball? You know, with basketball, I have something I can look towards as a 
potential reward as being the, the NCAA the tournament. Dance. Yeah. Yeah. But in football, I don't know. What do you look at? Well, I think going for, for the next two years, we do have the 12 team playoff. Okay. And that's re energized me in okay. football. There you go. For sure. And, and we can I just do don't that. know. There's a path. Where after those two years, what happens? Okay, because it's it's becoming very clear that be, it's so NCAA is so crazy. They create rules. Okay, there there's rules, and the and the member schools agree to the rules, or they're the one they're the NCAA, and then a team breaks the rules, and then they they go to go to court over it. It's just happening right now. Like Tennessee <laughs> is like taking yeah. them to federal court. Are they really? Because they're because. They're getting dinged again for NIL stuff. And it's like, it's crazy. It's like, I don't understand. Like, And then everything the NCAA does and every rule they have, every time they go to court, they lose. Because it's like antitrust this. And, anti- and it's like, there's, there's soon going to either be zero rules whatsoever because everything is deemed antitrust or illegal. Or they're going to make... They're going to take the teams that can afford to pay their players, and they're going to be employees, and there's going to be a break. How about this? How about here's the impetus? And then they have rules. The top teams, yeah. let's say Michigan, Ohio State, Alabama, the SEC, they start losing their coaches to the NFL because the coaches don't want the headache. You're starting to see it a little bit. That's what I'm saying. And Mm -hmm. so if the impetus is to say, hey, we got to stop this, they're all going to go to the NFL because one of the reporters that was talking about Jim Harbaugh was saying – you know, they're dealing with all of these uh, recruitment violations during a yeah. dead zone. And yeah. he's saying some of these guys are pulling up in a Lamborghini on signing day. <laughs> like, what are we doing? Like, I got to fight. You know, you got to, like, have all these compliance guys. And you got to have all of this, you know, administrative staff try to keep you within the guardrails of the thing. And they're like, screw that. Like, I'm out of here. Yeah. And so if you start losing your top talent, then well, they're going to branch and I, yeah. off. No, I agree. And you're seeing the Boston College head coach is going to the NFL to be a defensive coordinator somewhere. I just saw it last oh, night. Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. And I would never, and we talked about this before, like in the current system, being a head coach at a college would be like, if you could just go to the NFL, I think we we're talking about it with Kellen Moore. It's like, if you could coach the NFL, you're just coaching. Way less headache. Way less I headache. Mean, you're not you're dealing with kids. You're not recruiting. You're not talking what's illegal, what's not. There's clear cut rules. Everyone in the NFL has agreed to the rules. They have literally, they have times they're not allowed to, the players can't even be there because they have collective bargaining. They have a, they have a union. You know what I mean? Like, College football is a mess, but that's what I'm getting at is I think because of all this and what you're talking about, and maybe that's not – two years ago I would have said, like, that's so horrible. Like, maybe that's the best thing that can happen is that Alabama and Michigan and everyone just goes and does their own thing and pays their players and does their own thing. My, my, my biggest issue – and I wouldn't even care if that happens at this point, if there were the top 30 schools that did that – and they, they become semi-pro, and they pay their players and their employees and whatever, and everyone else just gets back to what, you know, a scholarship and a little money, whatever, and rules. I would actually maybe be okay with that now. The, my biggest issue is that if it were to split amongst the power five, then there's like 65 schools doing that. And, it, and it's like, I, why do why would we deserve not to be there when you know that Indiana yeah. and Rutgers We've and Iowa State, that. yeah. that's what bugs me. <clears throat> totally. They're coattailing off the top 20 brands too, just like everyone else's. And at what point, like, you know, because you've been in the same league with them for 100 years makes you better? Yeah. Like, it, it's not a they would have They would have <laughs> such, like, if you took the top 20 schools away, they would be marginally more valuable TV wise than Boise state. Yeah. In my opinion. And so that's what I don't like is that we're going to, it seems like we might get left behind. You wish you know, more. Bas- basketball is more of a meritocracy. Yeah. And football's not, it's not, it's, it's, you know, so I don't know. It's, it's I, frustrating. I, I guess we don't have to go there right now, but yeah, well, you're on the subject. So relegation, let's get it going. Dude, relegation. Awesome. I will die on that Hill. That would be awesome. It would be awesome. You know what I kind of want to is, I'm, I'm sort of tired of universities managing a semi-pro yeah. athletic team, right? Like you have they the university set up president. To do that. No, no, it's she, about education. It's yeah. about education. <laughs> <laughs> but they have this like multi-million dollar profit generator that they're all of a sudden in charge of, and that they're sometimes at the mercy of. And and I think you get a lot of universities that want to just 
care about education. Yeah, right? sure. Yeah. A lot dude. of people there are like, dude, football is a whole other animal. And it drives a lot of people crazy, I think. I mean, yeah, I they, yeah, they benefit from the money that comes from it, but I bet they would like to see that separation. I, that's why I think, honestly, split off, lease the name, lease the stadium, lease the brand, and then have it run by an, an independent LLC or whatever, an independent group, because... The, so these the, guys aren't going to college then? Let's just say they, that No, I'll say that's it's part optional. of the deal. They, that's, uh, yeah. That's kind of optional anyway, <laughs> yeah. at least in the SEC, yeah. right? <laughs> right, right, well, like... You could say, look, if you come, you have a scholarship to go. Even if you want to do it after your football career, you can come back and yeah. do that. And you can get an education. That's totally fine. That could be part of the incentive to go into that team. But look at look at our school, for example. You have Marlene Trump, who I'm sure is a, a fine person. But she probably came through the academic path. Sure. Yeah. Right? So, and then, you know, you got to hire um, Jeremiah Dickey, who's good. But he's got to really be straddling two things. The elephant in the room, which is football, and then basketball, men's basketball on some occasions, and then everything else. <laughs> Gymnastics and volleyball yeah. and wrestling or whatever you have going on. And, yeah. and yeah, it's I just like, I just don't – I mean, I don't know how all this stuff – and I, I haven't heard enough about it. Like, Title IX is a big deal, right? Yeah. Do you guys know how – you know how Title IX yeah, yeah, works, yeah, yeah. right? So it has to do with the percentage of – if your student body is 55% women, 45% men, then you have to have basically 55% of your scholarship monies going to, to women. Proportionate. It has to be proportional, right? So I don't know how, I don't know. I mean, can you just, but we all know, everyone knows, no secret. We just came out the other day. Was it LSU or Ole Miss? One of the top women's basketball programs. Yeah. No, 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 LSU. LSU, they won last year. They lost $8 million last year, their women's basketball That's program. wild. <laughs> It's wild. So no one makes money other than football and some basketball. Men's basketball. Some men's basketball. So how do you deal? How do you do that? So college sports is just, <laughs> it's just one big level. Like the very, very, very top makes a ton of money, generates a ton of money. And then it goes down through the levels, you know, the different conferences or whatever. But even in your own school, even in Alabama, football is paying for everything. And if all of a sudden you're like, well, geez, you need to pay the football players because they're bringing all this money. Well, how in the world are you paying for the women's diving team? I just don't. I don't understand yeah, that. I, I like, think are, are all of a sudden the coaches are going to say, "Okay, I'll take a million bucks a year instead of 12. Like they're not going to well, do that. Okay, well, well so I don't know how I, legally it I, works. What if I propose this to you, right? So let's say Alabama takes off a uh, football team leases, right? So okay. you're getting some money there, so you could subsidize from that if you wanted to. But why are colleges? Why do they need to have a diving team? <laughs> well, like, I know that's crazy, but like, could that be a club or could it be, you know, sponsored by the parents or could it be whatever? Could they just get a basic subsidy to go to school and not have to pay a coach? I guess I, you know, well, that's that, going that's into title, further, what I'm going in is title nine, right? Then you, I'm just saying like offset everything. Maybe, you know, maybe just, you know, why do you have to spend a ton of money on athletics at all? Like if you're like, oh, if it's a title nine or cut that program. Right, cut this program, cut that program. You know what I mean? Make sweeping changes. You'd have to, to make big changes. Okay, but, and, but it's a good point. Like, yeah. when did we get in the? When did colleges, you know, American universities? When did they get in the business of giving kids money to play a sport? Right. Like, when did that start, and why did it start, yeah. and what's their return on investment? Is it like because no one cares about these? Like, the numbers are what they are. These these programs take away way more money than they generate in ticket revenue and t whatever they're money losers yeah so why are they doing it and and why is it because then because they've always been doing it when when it was it was like yeah. a, it was like a club that they would start and say and then hey it's like hey a, we we'll get a couple bucks so we'll be really like i'm sure it just kind of slowly but if you really take a step back and you say why are we spending? Why is the? Why did we lose? And my daughter million? plays soccer. I love and and you know she. I'm all for women's. I'm all for sports that aren't necessarily the big high revenue generators. But ultimately, if you take a step back, you say, wait, why is Boise State spending fifty thousand dollars a year on a girl or a girl or boy? I don't care on a boys tennis player or a girl soccer player who doesn't bring in any money. Why are they doing yeah. that? And my thing is... At a university, this... Like, why? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what you think. And my, my thing is, giving somebody a scholarship, like, not collecting money is so much different than spending money, right? And so, 
You know, if you want to even incentivize an athlete to come in and say, here, we'll give you a scholarship so that you don't have to pay to go here, but we're not going to pay for you to fly <laughs> yeah. to, you know, you could play teams around here. You can play Idaho State. You can play University like of Idaho. Regional. It's just like you could just play and you can have fun and maybe that could springboard you to a Olympic career, maybe. But most of these guys, like they advertise on TV, 99% aren't, aren't going, going anywhere. Yeah. yeah. And so it should be. And, and then you can even say, well, how mu- what's, what's happening to the cost of attending college? It's skyrocketing yes. anyway. Yeah. So it's like, would that help? Maybe. I don't know. But I guess I just look at it and think it's not a sustainable thing. I remember, so going to a family reunion up in Pullman, one of my wife's cousins, so cousins-in-law, right? So she, she, he married an administrator in university or Washington state Mm -hmm. and she works in the athletic department. Okay. And all she talked about for three days. Now this is years ago. Mm -hmm. This is probably seven years ago. She's like the football pro we're losing so much money, millions of dollars a year. And we're getting all this TV money, Mm -hmm. but we're paying the coaches. We're paying. It's like a huge burden on her. And she was just part of the payroll department. Yeah. (laughs) And she's, that's all she talked about. You know what I mean? And so it's like, the majority of these colleges aren't Alabama, right? You know, they're not just raking in a ton of money. And can we segue into another topic? Yeah. That's yeah. similar that I think is super interesting. Let me, I just want to, just in case, I'm not saying I don't want kids to get scholarships to school. Just, just so. Yeah, I'm record. just questioning, like, where did it ever start? But I love the idea that a kid from anywhere, inner city or low income or whatever, has a chance to play a sport and get their college paid for. I love that. Yeah. I do love it. And, I, and I hope it continues. Sure. I just want to put that out there. And just at some point, it's like, wait, where did we get into all this? Yeah, it, Sorry, it gets ahead. more. Yeah. Anyway. Segway. Um, segway. 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 Uh, who's playing in the Super Bowl? The Chiefs and the Niners. Yeah. Chiefs and Niners. Yeah. Who's the starting quarterback for the Niners? Purdy. Okay. Rock Purdy. Low, like one of the lowest. Mr. Paid, Irrelevant. Like. 16 college football players are making more money than Brock Purdy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, no, did, did mean, you see, at least. What? Did, at least. What? The, uh, what? Did you see the Babylon B <laughs> tweet about Brock Is Purdy it? being able to see Taylor Swift in person? He's, He's the so only excited. way he could afford it. He, yeah, <laughs> to he go to the Super Bowl. the Harris Tour tickets. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I mean, if you're Brock Purdy, I, I'm sure he's making more on what sponsors, or, or um, he's probably uh, making he's, a little bit more there. Yeah, but his contract was like a couple hundred thousand or eight hundred yeah, thousand like a year. Yeah, and more than me, be slightly more than me. Like, WTF? It's or, you crazy. know, like yeah. it's why wild, man. Paid so and he'll get paid and, his second contract around. Yeah, well, yeah, and that's why you look at colleges and you think, ooh, if it goes semi-pro, what's the incentive to leave? Clay Travis brought this up a couple weeks ago, right? Every rule that the NCAA goes to court in, and I just said, gets struck down, antitrust, anti-whatever, right? What happens when the kid says, why can't I have another year of eligibility? Right. Like, like what's not, not the injury, but like literally like I can make a million dollars here. Tim Tebow, Kellen Moore wasn't yeah. a big NFL. It's, Anyone. It's no longer one and done. It's like eight and done. No. Right? It's, like, I'm going to start. I mean, already get, but seriously, what? They just made up a rule, said you can only play four years, right? Mm-hmm. Why? Yeah. Why know. is it four years? I don't know. Well, especially right? if like, you it's separate just like, it well, out. Why, why, why can't you have an idea? Why can't I induce? Well, I guess why not? Yeah. yeah well, why, why can't are, I talk to that kid on that team? Oh, yeah, I guess, you know. Like, well, why every rule they've come up four with. Four-year degrees, right? Like, why do you have to be in school for four years? No, degrees could take three years. They could take two. They could take yeah. eight. But they Seriously. just make them four, and then that's how long you play football, right? Well, then, or whatever. But it's... but. That's it, what I'm saying. Like every rule that they set up, so there's a someone's going to challenge it, who's and they'll the, probably lose. Who's the who's the is it the tight end for Oregon? Oh, uh, he was for the ninth year guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was the Boise State commit initially was, nine was years ago. So he went yes. to I forget which college. He went to he went Oregon to. and Miami. I oh, he's know. at Miami now. Yes, is that right? Yeah, he's okay. At Miami so he now. got injured a couple years in a row, several, and then he and transferred the COVID year. around, and then COVID year. Look at Cam Martin. He's on year number seven. Seven. Yeah, but those Almost are like double. But dude. those are technically doctor. like within the rules doctor somehow. Medically, be. yeah, he better be a doctor. Well, look at well, look at if you're if you're what if you're coming in and you're saying, hey, I'm just going to play four games. 
Okay, that okay. okay. I'm gonna extend so my year. So I'm, I'm gonna, gonna redshirt like, like Hank, like Hank did. Well, yeah, like he played four games and then he redshirted. Yeah. And yeah. then and then you play four games the next year and they're like, all right, that's my gray shirt or like whatever whatever loophole you want to do. Yeah. And then you're like, okay, now I'm now this is my graduate year, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and this is my like this year and that year, and it's like they need oh. more shirt colors. Do a red shirt, gray yeah. shirt, brown shirt. <laughs> I mean, I I would have been okay if Kellen stayed another. Four years, yeah, I would have. Yeah, that would have been that. fun. That would have been amazing. And if he could have been paid to do that, the issue is relevant again. Yeah. You know, we didn't have P gate. It's like <laughs> not that have to go to the never NFL happens. And not do anything in the NFL. I don't know, man. It's like if you're Brock Purdy, P-H. it's such an upside down thing. And and Southwick. if you especially, <laughs> so let's get Southwick on the show. Got to tell, got to put Southwick. Joe down. Southwick, if you're out there, come on the show. <laughs> uh, it's a part of the BSU timeline. <laughs> it's okay. absolutely it just part is. of the lore. Um, I just think if if it turns semi pro, there's going to be that group of players that overlap where you're making more than you would as a pro. Yeah, and so, so it's leave? like why leave? Yeah. And and now you're stopping kids from going into college because there's not room for them to replace the older right. guys, and then. The, the flow of people going into the NFL is so different, and it kind of mixes up that. It's a, weird, it's a weird mix and mess right now. It is. Holy cow. And it may get but odder. Yeah. <laughs> It'll get messier. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, BSU football. Yeah, on our last episode that we didn't yeah. publish, yeah. we didn't post, we talked um, Coach Collins. Coach Collins, yes. Um, coming back from Penn State to do special teams, right? Yeah. I think it's a little. I'm excited. Old. I'm excited. We're all excited. We yeah, we, we went into it. Now it's like ah, second time around. But t- I just think, I mean, to to touch on it, it just is another win for Spencer Danielson, and who on in a long line of winning. He lost the UCLA game, which didn't go well. Didn't have a quarterback, right? Other than that, it's been win, 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 win. Kept Bush, kept Genty, got a five star receiver. Was uh, losing court- Taylor a loss? Uh yes, I think I think, but or a net win, dude. It could be a net win. If you read articles about Taylor, he's like the next Heisman. He's the next Heisman. I've seen. I've actually seen some article, and I that clicked on so one, funny, and they're like, man. "Check this guy he's out. Look amazing. what he did." And I'm like, it's "All his highlights. Look at what he did against like dude, Central Florida." Look I said this did. the other day, dude. It's like it's we next year. We're about to find out. Did we mismanage that in epic proportions? Or is he going to be riding the bench? Well, did we miss? It could manage, be either one. Did we mismanage Ryan Finley? Uh, I don't. Well, that was a tough hurt, deal right? because well, he got hurt and then Rippin and Rippin had proved he's still in the NFL. Rippin was a great quarterback here. People liked to rip him because he wasn't Kel Moore. Rip him. <laughs> uh, he was a great quarterback here. So that and so we'll see. Does Malachi Nelson come in and Taylor Green's a distant memory? Hopefully, I mean I I hope Taylor Green does well. But I. We've talked about Taylor Green's hours here, right? But you listen to the Arkansas guys, and you listen to anyone over there. They have zero. They either totally have no idea, or they totally don't want to acknowledge that he was benched for a five nine freshman <laughs> this year, <laughs> and he they would not let him throw the ball on third down. Five seven Boise State. So again, five seven probably. Well, what is it? Max so Rice did we, is six five. Again, did we mismanage that to be on epic proportions? Which I personally think we did. I think we mismanaged that whole two QB which system. Part, which part did we mismanage? Because he was not playing well. Right. Like we had to pull him. The fact that we went to the two, we should have either just pulled him good. and gone with Mad Dog, or let him play and designed the offense around yeah. him the way they did in the last three games, which he looked awesome. That's what we should have done. You're saying, or we should have benched him. But we did this in between thing, which was a total mess, and drove so him out of here. You're saying that. He he started and played one play and left was a bad idea. Maybe, possibly <laughs> one play. <laughs> hey, come back okay, and hey, we'll see you on third down. The funny thing no. is, we we he, ge- he started to play one play and then he was out. Dude, like yeah. he played three more plays. Like, San yeah, Diego Taylor State. Taylor Green is our starting quarterback. The crazy for one thing play. Is, he plays one play. All right, he's out. The crazy <laughs> thing, that, yeah, it's, it's looking back, that was ridiculous. The crazy <laughs> thing is that we've like here on this podcast and generally speaking, ninety eight percent of the the fan base has praised Bush Hamden for everything he's done, Brandon, and for good easy. reason. Brandon, go easy. But Tread who lightly. was in charge Bromance? of that situation? I don't know because uh, that was a cluster. You know what? It was such a mess. It changed when. <laughs> it was such uh, a so mess. what was odd is it changed when Avalos left. And it changed when Mad Dog when got Mad Dog injured. got hurt. Okay, but look, like we don't know what would have happened if Mad Dog was healthy. We don't, and Avalos is gone. Right. We so don't. did Avalos we make don't know. that decision? We don't know. All I know is that when when Bush or whoever 
no longer had the option of Mad Dog, and they had Taylor Green, he looked the best that he looked all year. Yeah. And it was because we said, okay, here's... I think Bush has this idea, and I think he's great offensive mind, and he has this idea of what he wants his quarterback to do, and Taylor doesn't necessarily fit in that. And Mad Dog kind of fit a little bit better into that, and that's why there was that. But once Mad Dog was hurt, and it's like, Taylor, all right, he's got this skill set, let's just... Just like Dirk Cutter did, and Taylor looked all league yeah, but the last three games. Do you games. remember when they asked Avalos, like, who decided on the QB system? Yeah, and, and he's he... like, well, we all did. <laughs> and then Bush comes up after, and they're like, they said, you all kind of decided. And I think Bush was kind of like, yeah, yep, we did. <laughs> and he's like, no. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I don't it was that. I don't know. I think it was more Avalos. Hope, I hope it was more I Avalos. Think it was more so Avalos. you set up the scenario after Mad Dog got injured, right? Yeah. What was the difference between that and what we had at the start of the year when he was the clear front runner, yeah. the clear starter, and everything was it I, was not like Mad Dog was going to come in. I mean, Taylor took himself out of the UCF game. He yeah. like self benched yeah, himself. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, I I would say that Bush had all of fall camp and practices to see the skill sets, and I I don't know. I don't know if there was always this like these guys are pretty close. But you're right, Taylor took to to your point. He was the face. He's on the side of the stadium. He had an NIL deal. He had all these things. Like it was all in his hands to be the guy, and he played his way out of that, no doubt about it. So I, I'm not going to argue that. But then the whole like two two QB thing, no one can argue. It just was such a mess. And then when Mad Dog got hurt, Taylor played the best football he's played in sure. his career. Yeah. And it'll be interesting. I root, I'm rooting for. The, he seemed like a great kid. Yeah. I don't blame him at all for tra- for transferring because of the situation. Um, I hope he does well in Arkansas, but it is to your point. It was funny. It's funny to listen to them. They they do believe they're getting UNLV, Taylor Green, yeah, and not UCF. UCF can't Taylor throw Green. a six yard <laughs> out yeah. Taylor Green. Which one is it going to be? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, it, it's what's been going on in the off season is very exciting. It makes you wonder: is the magic back or the feeling of magic back? Is the mystique Ooh, back? Because you have guys. You got Malachi Nelson coming from USC. What about Chris Marshall? You got we Chris Marshall. About him. Yeah, yeah, we heard about it. Yeah, Chris Marshall, who was a five-star recruit. And is was currently the number one JC Number one recruit. JC. Mm-hmm. And then you got Collins, who took a pay cut to yep. come here. Yep. So you start to ask these questions like, why are they coming? Like, why are they doing yeah. this? And I'm not saying, like, Boise State is not good. Why would you come here? But it's just like Spencer Danielson and his crew – and I think Jeremiah Dickey also, they're doing some really great yeah. things. Mm-hmm. The, what was the wide receiver's name, Marshall? Chris yeah, Marshall. Chris Marshall. That's the Malachi effect, right? It has to be, I think. Because he's not coming here if it's Mad Dog. <laughs> I don't think <laughs> so. May, probably not, right? And that, so, yeah, that's pretty wild, man. He, that one was interesting to, to read the behind the scenes. It was like he approached Boise State or they approached him and they were like, hey, this could work out, but there's also a plan if it doesn't work out, if you're like, not doing what you should. We're just going to bump you. Like, this is your last shot. Yeah. This is the last And that's what it needs to be for a kid that's been kicked, basically has been kicked off two teams. Did you right? see who got NIL from Lithia Ford? I love uh, that. Ahmed Hassanin? Yes. Yeah. And Lauder? And Lauder. Simpson. Yeah. We didn't get, yeah, and Andrew Simpson. Simpson. Those three. And then the, the volleyball player who's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> that Paige girl yeah. is amazing. And then a golfer, a guy yeah. golfer. But, yeah. but those aren't like your superstar positions, I, right? I thought it it's was not quarterback. Be Malachi, it's, yeah. You yeah. know what? I thought totally it would be Malachi. I like, I, I really like that Boise State, it seems, they haven't necessarily announced this, but it kind of seems like what they're doing is if you come in here and play well, you will be rewarded. We're not going to just pay someone to come in. Yeah. And which which is great because like I would have thought that would have been Malachi Nelson number one recruit he's got to have an NIL deal and it but sends, it sends the wrong message I think. it does so but the message I think they're sending is look what Ashton Genty he came in had a great freshman year had a great sophomore year and now he's getting paid and Andrew Simpson probably had some power five opportunities we're gonna take care of you and Hassanin and they're they're taking care of the guys that have proven it for Boise State which is awesome to- and how they've done that and not. Didn't have to pay to get Malachi Nelson or pay to get Chris Chris uh, Marshall. I don't know if that speaks to to Danielson, the culture, the the potential of winning, the potential to get the playoff. I don't know, but how, it's whatever it is. I like it. How much did Malachi make last year? I don't know. No es- one knows. Estimated. 
But I thought the, it thing, was, the thing that we looked at said he got an NIL before in high school. In high school. So to his credit, maybe he's like, "Look, I got, I got some money. a couple hundred thousand. I, I can. I think you got at least. I'm that. okay. This will with, float me for a little. Yeah, bit. Yeah, like as a college student, you don't yeah. have any other <laughs> expenses, especially if they're paying for your travel and they're paying for all that stuff to go yeah. to the games and all that. And so it could be like, "Hey, I'm not interested in that. I just want to win." Um, so maybe, maybe that's interesting. I don't know. But whatever it is, I, I do like the message it's sending. Yeah. Saying, hey, look, if you come, you perform, you work hard, you will have the opportunity to get paid. Yeah. But you got to you gotta prove it first. I, I like that. I do like that. Can I um, change one more? Two, well, maybe yeah, two we more. Got, so. We're we, 54 yeah, minutes. We got we're good. Five minutes left. Oh, you guys have to go? No. Well, well I got to get back to work. Okay. Yeah, we're good. Um, okay. Idaho Statesman. Uh-oh. Oh, the Bulldogs. <laughs> the Bulldogs. The Bulldogs. The ball. What? <laughs> what? The story that Mark Remember called. A weeks oh, ago? the Bulldogs. The oh, that's right. Can that's we talk Ron. about that before you go to the States? Poor Ron. Go for it. Mark uh, tweeted. <laughs> Ron kind of got a little defensive about it. Ron that. started blocking people. He didn't Ron. block me because I didn't. I didn't. I wasn't you outed him. To Ron. You outed him. Where did you find that? Did you take that picture? I took the picture. Okay. Yeah. You, Dude, didn't you it, out him? I didn't out him. I out. You I just like him. called out the states. You just called you the statesman. Added him. I I added him. At, at I called two. out the statesman. Yeah, because they're pathetic. Because they're horrible. You run a story they, about Boise they run State, a, okay, and you call Ex- them the Bulldogs. Explain what In happened the, here. Okay, so the story was about Boise <laughs> it State. It was just the printed special version. Special right? teams. It was a print. Well, if, if it's online, you can change that quickly, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, you can cover it's that the up. Printed when version. It's printed, you can't cover it up. So who knows? The one online could have had that title, and no one saw it. Printed version runs a story about Boise State special. Nobody's Printed seen, in Boise. Nobody's seen the Statesman Digital is probably not yeah. a surprise. Yeah. But anyway. Yeah, we're telling you all this because you probably didn't see it because yeah. you don't have subscriptions to the Statesman. But in the headline, it referenced us as the Bulldogs. The, bull- <laughs> the Bulldogs. <laughs> Who made that mistake? The, well, the bull- Ron said Ron it was said he wrote the story. And then... That's the problem I have with the Idaho Statesman. It's run by out-of-state people. Yeah, yeah. But and someone somewhere in Chicago or whatever slapped on the Bulldogs. Okay, but where and does it gets that, printed. Where does the headline come from? you got to think it comes from Ron. Someone had to write it. No, someone it doesn't it. come from Ron. I remember Why I would remember someone Prater. else write a headline for your story, though? I don't get that. Prater, the sports editor, oftentimes we'll writes the headline. It. Okay. You submit well, the story. Someone submitted read it. Read the article, so, though. Some, like, read who it's about <laughs> before you come up with that. I don't no. think they have time. <laughs> so time. pathetic, like, dude. So bad. Like, well, I the reason, 40 hours this week. The reason, I, so <laughs> the reason I wanted to bring it up is um, Rachel Roberts. Roberts? Yeah. Oh, so yeah. I saw that, too. I think I don't know what you're talking about. Before she the, works for the Statesman. Yeah. She's a good reporter. She's a good reporter. Yeah, yeah. No issues with her. So she tweeted out, not on her Statesman profile. Or she retweeted. She retweeted it. Yep. And then she's like, hey, the statesman's missed two payrolls. Oh, yes. I know. To start this. the year. They start were laid the on. They didn't miss them. They were laid on them. Okay. That's not good, though. No, I mean, it's pretty that's much the same good. thing. <laughs> so, well, if you get paid a day or two late or not getting paid, that's different. But it's well, not good. It was, for it was enough for them to say, hey, look, this is a big deal. We're going to post this out publicly. Yeah. And so you look at it and you think, they nice. may start cutting stuff, and they may even go out. Well, they've to, been cutting stuff for okay, years. Okay, well, they, they, you know, well, look, if, you're, if your talent's like, hey, I'm not safe here, yeah. like my paycheck yeah. isn't safe here, yeah. I'm out. Oh, yeah. They got to be looking at other options. They have to be sure. looking at other it's options. It's a huge red flag if it's even huge. two days later. Oh, my start gosh. Huge incredible red, red flag. And yeah. so for them to say, and now they're not sending Ron to New Mexico. No. They don't send anyone anywhere. Bronco Nation may be the only news Maybe. coverage of Boise State I in the press. entire state. I don't press, but they don't who, send anyone who either. Who piggybacks off of BJ Reigns. Yeah. He's Dude. essentially syndicated now. Yeah. <laughs> if BJ didn't start BNN two years ago, Wouldn't have he would be forced to do it now because there's like... Yeah. Yeah, what there's nobody else. Think, and, and I love BJ and Bronco Nation news, but it's not good for anyone to just have one source. You yeah, I mean? you, you, the, the thing I liked about BJ, and BJ does an incredible job. I love Jordan K because he oh, actually he spoke to power. He He's was like, good. you're doing this wrong. And, and it was nice to have BJ to have that part of his organization because BJ has to, like, manage those yeah. relationships. Like, yeah. you give me he access. He another writer that can get in the dirt a little bit. And, and not have anybody like him. Yeah. Yeah. You know? He does. He needs another one. And so. You want to do it? Uh, yeah, when are we going to get credentials to go? That was that. We need, yeah, when are we need we more than like our family to listen. <laughs> is the problem? Don't we just need to call the Mark's mom? Don't we just need to call the SID and be like, bro, let us? He'd in. be like, yeah, well, maybe if you talk to if people more than your 
parents listen to this <laughs> podcast, then we'd let you in. Um, more than our parents. Anyway, I just think like I'll I'll be on Twitter X, and I'll be watching, and I, which I wish that was only sports because I love I love that's why I love Twitter. Is you look at the end of the game and you're looking at the reactions to the yeah. game, and yeah, it'll I be like last night, BJ Reigns, and you know, be Prater, or it'll be something like that, and then Ron counts. And I'm like, he's just posting what everybody else is posting because <laughs> he's not there. And no he's one's engaging with what he's posting. Yeah. And it's no. like, he's just watching the game like I'm watching. Yeah. It's a mess. It's and a so mess. It's like, That's what, not good. What yeah. insight does he have? Like, what? More than, yeah, he, more why, than us. Why would I pay Ron to do something that I can do? Yeah. Like, why would I pay for a subscription? Yeah. Like, right. like fans that are there are posting. And I'm like, oh, that's it. that's interesting to me. Ron's like, here's the game stats. No, like, it's oh, funny. Okay. <laughs> you, you know, people that use like media, like pictures and stuff, they have to give credit to like, hey, Idaho Statesman. Yeah. Ron's doing the opposite. He's, He's like taking fans pictures. Which I get. And, and to <laughs> his He's giving credit to Matt to Bowser and whoever's actually at the game. And to his defense, <laughs> it's like he they're not sending him down. You know. No, it's not, not his fault. I feel bad for Ron. I, yeah. yeah. He seems to be a fine writer. I don't. You know, but. Tough it's situation. A tough, tough deal. Yeah, we're not trying suck. to kick Ron. No, uh, no, it's man, it's not yeah. good. Mm-mm. Yeah, the, the it has fallen very far. It's it's gonna. They fault. used to interview us for high school basketball. They did. Yeah, like, forget about Dude, that. That is an op- that, that is an opportunity. That's a legit opportunity it, for it's a different media. world though. Like high school, it's it very is. Much but there's a big Instagram. following. There is. There is. I, it, it's less print, I would say. But and if it's you had more it, video, like, like Bronco Nation News, but just for high school. Local high school. Yeah, I mean, content for local high school because Hawaii's great at basketball. There's a lot of stories there. That There's a ton been of told. stories there that are mm-hmm. not. They're going. And Brandon, I think 24 7 Sports is trying to do it. Yeah. Um, what's his last name? I forget his last name, but. Walton? Yeah. Yeah. I think he works for being it. Um, I yeah, don't know, okay. but I think you could get some subscribers. They're not going to BSU stuff. Anyway, that's another talk for another yeah. day, but I just think that's super interesting. Can we talk one last thing? Okay. You guys are all checking your if, watches. If, well, you know, some of us have to no, work. We're good. But if you've hung on this long, stick around, what, five more minutes? <laughs> mm. <laughs> Depends. Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Golf. Come on. Oh. Golf. Uh, a couple all things right, happen in the world. Golf. Week, <laughs> <laughs> Put shirts and skins. <laughs> let's get it. <laughs> 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 Dude, some things happen this week. Did you get to the range? What are we talking no. about? Oh, okay. <laughs> We've had warmer weather. Did you work on your <laughs> short game? Damn it. What's wrong with you guys? <laughs> Live golf, what? What are we talking about? I've Have I've you not been out. paying attention at Is all? Is Tiger playing? I don't know. <laughs> like, I've tuned you, out. Once the Live and PGA can I, thing, can I, I just give tuned you, out. Can I give you my evolution of golf? Go ahead. Uh, loved golf. Like, I got into it about seven years ago. Mm-hmm. You golf a lot. Got really into lot. it. Got, you know, Became what an are you, oak. A 13, 12, 13 handicapper. So at times right of the year, I was like single digit handicapper. Really? Yeah. And then I did. Did you ever back officially up. have like your mid, handicap mid was a single I digit? Wasn't recorded. Like so mid? don't tell that. Don't tell. Okay, me what your that's fine. Thirteen. It's not official. 13, thank 13. you. Thirteen. You went no, no, down no. to a single digit. You killed us <laughs> for was, it. Dude. Who's a single killed digit? Us. Like I'm a three 16. holes into the round. I miss. <laughs> yeah, that's a handicap. All right, go ahead. What? You don't make me bring up your history with playing because you were getting us crushed. I'm a nice sixteen right now. Which is where you need. Where I should be. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Anyway, I, I I got so into it. I loved following professional golf. Okay. So I wouldn't just watch the majors. Ugh. I would watch Corn Ferry. So, not Corn Ferry. I would watch some of the better PGA Tour events. Like right? Sunday afternoon and you didn't fall asleep. No, I'd watch some of the Saturday. Okay. Some of the Saturday oh, rounds of, your of yeah. And yeah. so and there was okay. a few that I really liked. I liked okay. the, the Tournament of Champions, Century Tournament. Okay. I liked the waste management, all that stuff. Got anyway, it. um, Liv came out. Yep. Ugh. You were a big proponent of Liv. I was a proponent for the following reasons. Okay. And this is this plays into the conversation. You okay? like them wearing shorts and playing shotgun starts. <laughs> I right? don't mind. Actually, the shotgun start thing I do like. Okay. Because I don't like the morning up. Stop it. You're Three baiting round. me. You're baiting me. He stop likes it. that they can drink stop on the it. course. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> no, stop. Don't, okay. Look, don't. Yeah. Get into don't it. Don't bastardize this. Okay. Here's well. the deal. Here's what I did. Live like. is bastardizing golf. No, it's Ooh. not. I'll say it right no, now. No, it's not. Okay, go ahead. What? <laughs> I didn't like that the the tour came out and we're like, oh, you're gonna start another <laughs> league? Oh, what oh. about 9-11 families? <laughs> yeah. Are you just gonna yeah. play blood money? Yeah. That's all you care yeah. about is blood money. So they started attacking them. Politic- and I was like, it was like a political on. move. It was like a political move. Yeah, for like, sure. wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We have wait, we have they're an ally. <laughs> Saudi Arabia. <laughs> like, what is that all about? Right. Yeah. So they started going hard after him. Right. Yeah. 
And all the players were like, oh, I can't believe they'd take all that money and they'd leave. And then, you one know, by one. <laughs> little bit comes out, little bit comes out. And then all of a sudden, Jay Monahan, who is the CEO or whatever, the director of the PGA, comes out and is like, hey, guys, we're joining them. Yeah. And now, all of a sudden, it's okay. Yeah. And yeah, nobody right. comes out and says, oh, sorry to have said you're unpatriotic <laughs> for taking all the yeah, money. Yeah, yeah. And so, but the But PGA, they haven't joined. They haven't joined yet. No, there's, I think the FTC is going to review it. Yeah, stuff, there's some interesting but stuff. But what, what happened recently. So anyway, I, I'm so fed up with professional golf. I stopped watching. What? I've stopped watching professional golf. I'm sick of it. I'm when's sick. Ti- of, when's Tiger play? I'll watch then. Yeah. Well, I think he's going to do a few. I think tournaments. he's playing a couple. Um, what happened? I, I don't even what care. What happened? What's the news? You said that something happened? Just well, that you don't watch it Some anymore. private equity no. came into PGA or something, right? No, you guys are all wrong again. Okay, go ahead. Well, what? Let me talk about I'm it for anxious. a second. I'm setting it up. You. Okay, so I'm I'm done watching PGA. Okay, and John Rom came out for live. He got six hundred yeah. million. So some other players, six hundred million. million. Terrell Hatton went to his team. He got like yeah, got thirty it. million or something. Okay, the most you can get at the PGA in a year, if you win the FedEx Cup, is fifteen million plus. If you win majors, you'll get between two and four million. Sure. Right. Okay. So taking a thirty million dollar payday. For Terrell Hatton, yeah, yeah, who will I, never I get win it. the FedEx Cup. Why okay. you do it? I understand so, that. All these players are like hemorrhaging over to live. Yeah, the PGA comes out and says, "Hey, we're going to get a valuation." Okay, and somebody came out like I think it was last year and said, "Hey, your valuation's at like fifteen or sixteen billion." Okay, and PGA is like, "That's stupid. We're way over that, right?" Okay. Well, this week they were valued by private equity at twelve billion dollars. Okay. And the Fenway Group was a big part of that. Who were basically they're taking it kind of public in a way. So they're getting the PJ is getting bought out by this group of investors who are then giving equity to players. Okay. And so then, Liv has been that that has all started to because of the the threat of Liv, yeah, right? Exactly. And okay. then these players are like, "Hey, this is really good for the non professional golfer because it incentivizes us." And we're all like, to do what? <laughs> what, are we <laughs> what are, how is it better for us? Yeah. What changes? And they're like, oh, we're, we got to make it a good product. You're like, you weren't doing wait, that before? Half, yeah, you're not doing that before. And half of your guys have left. And like, what are we, like, how am I helped by any of that? I, I think professional golf is totally, not, not just to say outbalanced with the amount of money that they get. Because guess what? A BSU football game has more viewers than most majors, like golf championships. Really? I'm not kidding. Mm. If, and you can even take it to the middle How tier. How do they make so much five. money then? I have no idea. Where's the money to come the point from? Where, to the point where, like Wells Fargo and Travelers, they're backing out as the title sponsor because the PGA goes to them and says, We need more money. You need to have bigger payouts. Yeah. And they're like, No, we're not. We can't do that. Yeah. We're not getting any of the things. And so it's, it's way, but they're way, valued way, way. at $12 billion somehow. Somehow. Ponzi yeah. Team. So there's something. But the thing is, the odd thing about the PGA is, the value is in the play is like the majority of the values is the players that are playing. Right. And when they go to an event, all of a sudden that event, like tiger mm-hmm. going to an event, all of a sudden like triples the value of that one event. Sure. And so the players who had no ownership, it was like independent contractors. Mm-hmm. It's such an odd dynamic that's unraveling, but it's like, I think it's worse for the sport. Yeah. I've, I think I, it drives since, I, and people that's like all me new away. to me, but like, yeah, just the live and the PG thing, it just started rubbing me the wrong way. Not the blood money necessarily, but it was more just like, I didn't like the idea that live broke off and they had no, they had so such deep pockets. They were just $600 million for John Rom. There's no way they can return on. There's no return no, on that. They no just returns. have oil money and they're just trying to take over professional golf. And I didn't like that part of it. That like an uh, unfair competition. Yeah, a totally yeah. unfair competition. There's they're not even worried about making a profit. Whereas the PGA Tour in theory was. And so they're like, wait, yeah, we can't pay anyone six hundred million just to exist because we don't have I mean, it's backed by the, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia and their oil. Right. That's their what live is. Investment fund. And I don't really love that. Okay. Because but, it's not a fair fight. Okay, that's fine. Um, other, uh, let's see. It, it's not uncommon to have other countries subsidize like airlines sure. or like whatever. Sure, sure, so sure. I get that. Um, however, dude, live $4 million for an event. If you <laughs> dude, those it. guys are rolling in it, dude. Just a regular, uh, it's, it, it's crazy. Wow. It's insane. It's insane. Right? What I didn't like is they were like uh, the PGA. I would have liked the PGA a little bit more if the PGA didn't, 
take the narrative yeah, yeah. and try to go like woke on it. Yeah, that, that's that's true. That but killed I, it for me. I don't understand why Liv, and then we better go, but I don't understand why Liv decided, okay, we're going to do something different. And the team format's fine, even though I don't really understand it. Why? I don't like the shotgun start. I don't like the three round situation just because maybe it's it's just different. But um, I don't so know why they had to make it different. Every event in the world is four rounds. Yeah, I why do I don't three? know. I don't and, know why. And it, well, I'll it tell jeopardized you why. their ability to get points and all that stuff. It was yeah. stupid. It was a stupid. Well, play. the fifty. So live stands for fifty fours. Roman numerals for fifty. There's only fifty four players. Yeah, right. So per, shotgun per start. I okay. actually like shotgun start. Okay. But the 54 holes, that's three days. You know what I mean? It's not four. Uh, and so it's not 72. Right. But yeah. I think John Rahm was like one of the reasons he wanted to go to live. Obviously, 600 million. a huge amount of money. 600 million. But, <laughs> that's why. But at the <laughs> same time, he why. was he was a holdout because he's like, I want 74. I want 72 holes. Like oh. he, they wanted to change. They made change that in the end. Yeah. Right. But international Shit. events, a lot of these international guys, they only play in the PGA, only in America. Right. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. live is all over the, the world. Yeah. And so that's a big draw for them. Yeah. Um, but what I didn't like is they kind of went woke that way. And, but the team thing, that may end up being a big deal where there's like equity in the team. Yeah. There's equity then in you're that rooting, asset. It's like NASCAR where you're rooting for a team. I right. can see it. I, I just wish there wasn't the conflict. And I don't know. It's interesting, but it's kind of turned me off. I've watched totally. less, less golf for sure than I ever did well, before. Well, dude, imagine, imagine if they don't let in the majors the live guys play. Yeah, then half the best players aren't playing. Half the best players That's in the world aren't playing. Either. And then Rory came around and said, hey. Let him play, right? Let Have him play in the PGA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's watching, interesting. Dude. We'll Rory's see. Rory's wild, dude. Rory. Anyway, uh, I think it's, I'm sorry. That's well, my one if, golf if portion. You, okay. If you stuck around this long. Unlikely they did. Leave a comment saying that you heard the golf part. <laughs> yeah. Come on. Uh, Brandon will send you a sleeve of golf balls. <laughs> no, I won't. <laughs> I can't Pro afford V1. that. Pro <laughs> Pro v- Maybe from <laughs> like... Leave your name. Pond. What do they call them? Pond pearls. The ones they pull from the uh, pond. Yeah. <laughs> like 50 cents a I'll ball. Send you one. Some slozengers. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe a noodle. <laughs> a brick. Slozenger. <laughs> Nike, Nike Mojo. <laughs> Noodles are the only golf balls Dude. I won't play. Nike Mojo. The My dad are. loves noodles. That's I the won't only play ones he will play. That's no, his, I won't play them. I'll give them all... I played a couple rounds of them. Moss handed you a noodle. Long and soft, right? <laughs> if Stan Moss handed you a noodle, would you hit it? No, like I wouldn't play. Around, I, I, like, I wouldn't hit it around the green. I, I like that's the one ball that's like, wow, this is like plays a lot different. All right. I always anyway. thought like I always thought like, why do they do long and soft? And my brother's like, well, what do you long and hard? What do you, what do you want to be? <laughs> like, I'm sorry. All right, let's get out of here. <laughs> Thanks go. for joining us. Like, subscribe, share. Uh, we'll see you next time.